Hello and welcome to the sixth stop in our virtual Whistle Stop Tour series. My name is Nikki Johnson, Executive Director of the North Carolina Small Grain Growers Association. And on behalf of our association, we want to say welcome to today's field day and thank you for taking the time to watch. Today, we are filming in Stanley County at Sunnybrook Farms. I'm here with Jamie Carrick to tell us a little bit about this farm. Sunnybrook Farms actually uh, kind of married into this farm. I've been married my wife 22 years and uh, so I started farming with him full time in the late 90s. And uh, we've got a son who's gonna come back. He's at North Carolina State University right now studying agriculture, wants to come back nice. and farm with us next year. We're excited about that. Uh, Sunnybrook Farms started here in the 40s. Uh, Spurgeon and Aline Brooks, my wife's grandparents, started the farm. They had four children. Uh, two of the children, uh, Butch and Jed, are brothers. They decided to continue the farm operation. Run a dairy farm, milk cows, 250 cows up until 1998. Then they had a uh, uh, sell and sold the dairy farm and went straight to row crop production. So about how many acres of wheat do you grow? On a normal year we go between four and six hundred acres. This year we have about six hundred acres of wheat. Wow, okay. What other crops do you grow? Uh, our biggest crop normally is cotton. This year with cotton prices the way they are we're gonna have a few more bean acres. So we're right around uh, total production acres about two thousand. All right, wow. Has the COVID-19 pandemic affected your farming operation at all? Uh, personally not really but our, our life hadn't changed as much being we're out and we're out kind of by ourselves anyway uh it's just the, the inconvenience of not being able to go out and take your family out to eat and just things that mo most people are dealing with right but uh having my son home from school and my my teenage daughters where they can't go anywhere has been pretty neat they, we get to spend more time with us we grill Absolutely. out a lot in the evenings and you know sit around the house and play cornhole when we have time but now we're getting busy uh, with this time of year with planting and everything and wheat harvest right around the corner we're going to be them them evenings are going to be spent on the tractors and the combines so i'm looking forward to that too though so oh, yeah <laughs> well i know for me and our association we thank you for everything that you and all farmers do we know your workload has not slowed down during this pandemic um, so we appreciate you well, and your commitment to agriculture can you tell us a little bit about what agriculture means to you and why you do what you do yeah sure um like I say, I married into this farm, didn't grow up on a farm. My, my grandfather always had a small farm, like a beef cow farm. Mm -hmm. We made hay and had some cows and stuff, and I enjoyed that growing up, but I knew it wasn't gonna be enough to um, make a living off of for full time. So I, I joked with my wife, I said I married her so I could farm, and she, she you know, kind of smacks me <laughs> around. But you know, but seriously, uh, today's time is hard to get into farming if you're not mm -hmm. really uh, born into it or whatever. So I'm excited that my son, who's grew up completely on our farm he's going to be back here and be carried on to the fourth generation yeah so i'm excited about that but we, we love the lifestyle it provides for us you get out here in god's country be good stewards of the land try to do our best job to to, uh, to to raise a crop that we can feed and put clothes on people back so that's a that's a that's what i enjoy about it the most just getting out here being part of what yeah. god created absolutely well we appreciate you and thank you for taking the time today to film with us and let us show off your farm well, a little you. bit thank you so very thank much. you all right. Well, we hope you enjoyed today's video. As always, it'll be posted on our website at ncwheat.com and our NC Small Grain Growers Facebook page. So we hope you enjoy from the comfort of your own home and feel free to share it with other people. And if you have any questions or need help with anything in your area, please don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you and enjoy today's video. Welcome to Stanley County. Uh, we're glad to have you and appreciate you watching the video. Uh, to all the growers and farmers out there, we're glad that you're able to hopefully gain a little something from today's video. Stanley County is a beautiful piece of land just east of Charlotte, about 30 or 40 minute drive. Um, it's got a lot of rolling hills and beautiful countryside. Um, we grow a substantial amount of uh, cotton, which is kind of unique to this area because of some of our gravelly uh, soil. But we also have uh, corn, wheat, soybeans, um, a dairy operation, some swine, and quite a large uh, turkey operation as well. And uh, it's just, if you're driving through, you'll just absolutely think you're almost in the mountains because we have the Uari National Forest that borders us and two lakes. Um, and it's almost like stepping back in time. It's a peaceful uh, location, good farmers that support each other, that enjoy growing together. Um, and really push the envelope. We have some of the largest cover crop area in the entire state. We also have one of the uh, best livestock auctions. Uh, Stanley County Livestock Auction down in Norwood is uh, used for feeder calves all over the state. 
as well as many other sales. So we're out here today at Sunnybrook Farms taking a look at some cover crop wheat. And I wanted to take uh, one of our whistle stops to have a conversation about cover crop wheat because we do have so much of it planted here in the state. A lot of growers use wheat as a winter crop to cover their ground, uh, even when they're planning to go in early with full season beans or going in with cotton or tobacco or sweet potato. And that keeps their ground uh, covered in the winter to prevent erosion and also to um, keep that soil active throughout the winter. This wheat was planted for cover crop following cotton at one bushel per acre. So being used for cover crop, no application of nitrogen was applied and no um, herbicide was applied prior to or just after planting. And we're just trying to keep that ground covered. Now in January, it was decided that this wheat would be uh, continued on for grain. And then the decision was made to go ahead and top dress this wheat so that we could start to get good grain fill. Uh, about 120 units of nitrogen was applied to this field in a split uh, with two applications and also Harmony was applied at the early splits in late January or early February to take care of any weeds. And they've done a very good job um, controlling most of the weeds. There is a little bit of ryegrass still out here, but that's very common in this region of the state. So after um, switching this wheat over from cover crop to going for grain, uh, it looks like this field is going to make somewhere between 65 and 75 bushels per acre. Contrast that to wheat that is grown specifically for grain in this part of the state. We would be um, managing that wheat from the very beginning to make uh, seed for milling or baking quality. And in those cases, growers are going to be pushing that wheat to make 80 to 100 bushels per acre. Um, there may be pockets out here that will hit the 80 bushel mark, but overall um, it's going to be an excellent uh, field that having chosen to go from cover crop over to uh, grain production. We've had very good conditions throughout the spring to fill grain. Uh, one of the important things that we need to see during grain fill in May is a cooler, wetter period for North Carolina, which is fairly uncommon for us. We tend to get hot pretty quick as we move into May, but it looks like we're gonna keep that cooler, wetter pattern, and that should be um, perfect conditions for making good test weight grain and filling grains very um, plump so that they can be accepted for milling and baking quality in this part of the state. Taking a look at wheat that is moving through the grain fill period pretty quickly and I wanted to take a few minutes to talk about um, what is happening as this plant moves from um, floral production and grain fill into the senescence stage where it's going to start drying down. And what you're going to notice if you drive by fields, um, these are just now starting to fire from the bottom up. So you have this yellowing color that starts at the base of the plants and it's actually going to move like a line up through the wheat canopy until it gets to the heads. And when it gets about halfway up the canopy, you'll start to see the awns um, give a, an amber color and then they will also change over to the straw color that we see uh, when wheat is fully mature. These heads are um, ranging anywhere right now from 24 to 32 uh, kernels in each one of them, which is a very good kernel count uh, for wheat in this stage. Uh, we're at soft dough, so it's gonna be about three more weeks before we are at hard uh, kernels, and uh, maybe a week following that that we'll be ready for harvest. So sometime at the very end of May, uh, beginning part of June, this wheat uh, should be ready for harvest.